So you watched my last video and picked a CAD program and designed something. Now you want to print it, but you aren't quite sure where to start. Selecting slicer programs, this time on Hack 5. Hey everyone, Glitch here and welcome back to Hack 5. Just like I said in the lead, we're going to be looking at slicer programs today. These are programs that, as the name implies, slices a CAD file into a 3D printable object. To give you a little background on how 3D printers actually work, as that'll be relevant for what we're looking at today, they take in code from an SD card or a computer. That code defines the item in layers. Imagine taking a bunch of pieces of paper that are cross sections of an object and cutting out those layers and stacking them to build a 3D printed or a paper object. We're basically doing the same thing with molten plastic here. And so we need to actually generate those files. Now, in the old days, uh, machinists would just manually program all the vertices and all the curves and everything to make the code to make these items. However, these days that would take a very long time and we can let the computers do the hard work for us. So slicer programs were invented. Now, just as the name implies, they take your item in and using a number of predefined settings, they slice the object into hundreds or even thousands of layers and the printer then takes those in and follows that code. So let's look at some slicer programs. Now, the first one we're gonna be looking at today is actually Cura. This is one I have used a lot and I love for a lot of reasons, but to give you some background on it, it's actually made by the company that produces the Ultimaker 3D printers. Now, it's not just for Ultimakers. They have a lot of predefined printers that uh, you can select from. And if none of these suit your fancy, or you've built a custom one, you can select custom 3D printer and input some settings like the bed size, the build height, the limits, the origin point, and that's a little out of scope for this video. For now, I'll be using my Monoprice, no, not my Monoprice Mini. In fact, the Prusa i3 that uh, Joel Telling from 3D Print Nerd graciously loaned to me. Now, just like the last video, this isn't gonna be an exhaustive tutorial on these slicing programs. Uh, I'm just going to give you a quick overview, pros and cons, and help you make a decision as what you want to use. Now, just out of the gate, this works on Mac, Windows, Linux, and so on, so you don't need to be super picky about what OS you're running it on. Now, one reason I keep going back to Cura is the user interface is so refined. Everything is just a click away. You select your file here, you select what printer you're using here, you select what filament you're using here, and then you select what basic settings. Now this is the advanced menu. However, it gets as simple as this, the layer height or the quality, the infill settings, so how dense your print is, whether or not you want support and adhesions. And you go into here, you can actually get a lot more advanced. And so when I am 3D printing my drones, I will actually customize these files to get more strength without increasing the weight by just maximizing infill. And then it's as simple as hitting slice it will do the process of cutting the part into individual layers. You can preview the model here. And as you can see, you can see each individual layer all the way down to the base. And you can even simulate the print here. Obviously, this is running rather slowly, but you get the idea. And that lets you visualize. However, you almost never need to do this. Now, what's also cool is you can click over to the monitor setting, and if you're using something like I set up in my OctoPrint tutorial a few videos back, you can actually monitor your print directly from here, or you can connect to your printer via USB, and while you won't get a camera view unless your printer already has a built-in camera, you'll get all the settings, the estimated runtime, and all these things. Now, while I don't have a SD card plugged in right now, you can click down here, it will say save to removable disk. And then after you do that, it will give you an option to just eject the SD card, which for 3D printing, while it's the whole safely eject SD card or removable device is kind of the butt of a joke, for 3D printing, you want to do that. For some reason, the text files will corrupt really easily if you don't properly eject your SD card, and you'll only ever find out halfway through your print and you'll hear your printer making horrible grinding noises or at least an error. So make sure to always eject your SD card, and Cura makes that really, really easy. Now, a couple more things about Cura. It's free. Uh, I don't believe it's open source. However, it is free to download, use, and so on. Beyond that, there's really no cons that I can think of. Like I said, it runs on Linux. It's free. The user interface is great. Uh, it might not support the specific 3D printer that you want to use. However, you can always add it via custom printers menu that I showed you earlier. Outside of that, 
that's really it. And oh, there's also a marketplace where you can get all kinds of plugins and extra materials. So like here, I have the Octoprint connection that I mentioned in the previous series on setting up Octoprint. That's why Cura is my favorite. It runs on everything, it's free, the user interface is great, and it just works. Next, we're gonna be taking a look at Slicer with a three instead of an E. We have the same pineapple example file loaded up here. Uh, some perks about Slicer, again, it runs on Mac, Windows, Linux, and it's completely free and open source. Now, the thing is, is it's kind of abandonware at this point. The latest compiled version for Windows is from 2018. Again, just like FreeCAD in the last video, it's a very functionality focused and not necessarily usability focused program. Now to actually change your print settings, which I find I need to do quite frequently instead of just different profiles, you have to go into the settings menu here and it's not exactly refined or user friendly. However, you can change everything you want and you can also save it as a custom profile. Now this doesn't have any monitoring features. It doesn't have uh, any SD card handling features. Uh, basically you will add an item you will slice it, scale it, split it, whatever you need to do, and then export it and print it. And that's it. Now, the reason I mentioned this one is it's actually what I got my start on when I started 3D printing. And so I figured it was worth mentioning. However, these days, like I said, without any support and new OSs and all of that breaking compatibility, I don't know that I would recommend it. It works at the moment, but in a couple of years time without any other support, it probably will not. However, it's an honorable mention because it was one of the first slicing programs out there and it's open source. Next on the list is Prusa Slicer. Now, as the name implies, it was built by Prusa Research, the company that built that printer. And it just works with their printers as you would expect. It is very optimized for their printers. However, it does have support for things like Anycubic and some other printers that are out there. And if you look up into the left-hand corner here, you can actually see it was based on Slicer. So while I did say Slicer isn't receiving support anymore, that's true. However, there are forks out there such as Prusa Slicer. As you can see here, you have different print settings, filament types. The UI looks a lot cleaner. You have advanced tabs where you can uh, and even expert modes where you can get access to more settings and so on. The user interface for rotating and scaling and dropping to bed is a lot more like Cura. You have all your print settings, filament settings, printer settings, and various tabs up here, which are easily accessible. And I haven't used this a whole lot. However, again, it's open source. It runs on Mac, Windows, and Linux. And if you're using a Prusa or one of the other supported printers that already has a profile for, it will just work. So make sure to check out Prusa Slicer if you are using a Prusa Mark III S or one of the others. And now, just like on shape in the last video talking about CAD programs, we have AstroPrint. And as you can tell, I just opened it in a Firefox window. So as you can imagine, just like I mentioned in the previous video, I was on the road for a while and I only had an Android tablet. However, I still had my 3D printer with me and wanted to print things. To my knowledge, there aren't any Android slicing programs. If you know of one, please do let me know down below because that would be really useful since Onshape and some other CAD programs are web-based and cloud-based. And I would love to be able to just use an Android tablet to do all of my 3D printing needs. However, back to the program. While the last three slicer programs were free, uh, AstroPrint is, can be free. Now there is a free tier and then there is also a premium tier and then of course a business and education tier. I find that the basic version is plenty enough for my needs. However, premium uh, may be more attractive to you. Now the cool thing about AstroPrint is there are actually OctoPrint plugins, uh, integrations with other printers. And so it can work completely over the cloud or over the web and you do not even need to use SD cards, which is good because the SD card system is kind of kludgy. Let's say I wanted to slice their example here. I would hit slice, set my quality settings of which you can also go into the advanced settings just like the other slicers. And if you hit print here, well, I don't have any printers actually network attached, so it wouldn't do anything. They also sell Astro boxes, which as far as I can tell are basically the equivalent of a Raspberry Pi Octoprint set up in a box. Uh, I'm simplifying. I'm sure there's a lot of custom software. I haven't played with it yet myself. Uh, however, if you want a plug and play solution that's cloud-based, Astro Print might be for you. But you hit slice 
and then you would download the file and you would put it on an SD card and put it in the printer. It's a little bit less refined than the way Cura works. Uh, the workflow in Cura is amazing. It directly saves to the SD card and then you can export it, plug it in your printer and print. However, this is one of the only solutions I found that works on an Android tablet. Uh, there is also something called Gridspace that I haven't played with, which is a similar online web browser experience, but I, I can't recommend for or against it. So if anyone's actually played with that, please let me know in the comments down below. And that about wraps it up. The nice thing about the Slicer program industry is it's not super industrial like CAD programs are. So they don't have the price tag. They're all fairly consistent uh, in their basic user, user interfaces and features and so on. So it really just comes down to personal preference and what little changes and features make it easier for you to use. Personally, I'm still a Cura person. However, if you have any recommendations for slicers that I should check out, please leave a comment down below. Soon, we're gonna be starting a DIY 3D printed drone series from scratch. I'm gonna be showing you how to design, print, and build the drone. So be sure that you're subscribed and keep an eye out for that series. It's coming very soon. I've been Glitch. This has been Hack5. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.